Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and today we're going to talk about how to add draping sleeves to a wedding gown, or I guess I should say uh, draping sleeves that don't affect the range of motion of the bride. Hey, are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but is looking to get into the bridal niche? This channel is for you. Welcome aboard. Brides often request these and call them bell sleeves or swaggy sleeves or romantic off the shoulder sleeves, but technically it's a draping sleeve. And that's what we're going to talk about today is how to put in a draping sleeve that does not affect the range of motion of a bride, or at least doesn't affect it very much. But first, I have got some awesome news to share with you. Congratulations are in order for one of our own. Her name is Nia Other Side on Instagram, and she is an aspiring bridal gown designer, and she made this dress. She designed it and made it herself, did an impeccable job, just amazing. So I just wanted to send a shout out to her, just so you guys can see what she's been up to. She made this corset herself, which is just amazing. Um, I'm just so impressed. Beautiful, beautiful job, and congrats on your wedding, Nia. So yeah, if you want to follow us on Instagram, we do have a new Instagram account over there. It's Bridal Sewing Techniques, so look for us there. So let's get back to this video. What we're going to talk about today is about the draping sleeves. And I know you guys have seen this a lot of times. Um, I know I see it all the time, social media, wherever, where there's a picture of a lovely bride. Um, when you look at her from the front, you know, everything looks fine and she has the draping sleeves. And then you look at her in the back and she has a low back gown like this. And evidently she went to a seamstress and she just said, can you just tuck this piece of fabric in I mean it looks okay right well you know the range of motion has been interrupted and her arm is basically kind of strapped down when she goes to raise her arm um, so we've all seen this um, it looks like this in the back on a low back gown um, and I have had brides that have said I don't care I like the way this looks I don't want to pay any more whatever um, and and they're happy with it being that way but if you want one that functions like this um, then you need the places that it attaches to to be higher so you can see this sketch where it has the stand going up in the back the piece of boning that is taller so that's what we want to talk about today is when someone wants these draping sleeves or a lot of girls call it bell sleeves like Beauty and the Beast is what they're picturing um, you need a higher back like this picture or you need that boning stand and obviously um, we see it a lot right now with the spaghetti strap gowns and the, you can attach it to the spaghetti straps. That's a very easy fix, but a lot of brides don't want the spaghetti straps. Um, another way that you can see them now, this is good fun and a very easy fix, is for them to make more like an armband that has the drapey part attached to it. I'm seeing this with a lot of boho weddings. So here's an example of one that I did, and this was um, raising the stand in the front and also in the back. Um, this one actually, the stand was originally in the back, but it was not in the front. This one I raised it in the back. So you'll see each dress has its own um, complications, its own personality. Here's one with new back stands. This is how it came to me. It had a strap that just went straight down the back and the bride didn't want that. She wanted something like this, but um, she learned very quickly if we attached it that way, it would hang her arm. So we practiced with her range of motion and we decided if it touched about right here that she could raise her and lower her arm naturally. Um, so we let that be our springboard for deciding where the stands will be put. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to build, I'm just calling it a boning stand. I don't know what to call the thing. If you guys know what it's called, leave it in the comments down below. Now let's get started picking out the fabric so that we can start with something that's going to match perfectly. All right, so here that I'm holding now is the bottom of her dress, and here's a couple of samples of lace. 
You'll see this one has more of a matte finish to it and it's um, it's like embroidered on tulle. Definitely from China, it's a lower cost lace. This one has a little bit more shine to it, um, but you can see the actual lace on the gown is ribbon work that has been done with silk ribbon. So we're gonna try to find something um, that we can put behind the actual lace of the gown that's gonna match. And I decided that this one actually matches the best. I liked that it wasn't reflective because it's just not distracting. So I'm gonna cut out um, two, I'm gonna cut out two appliques out of this. I pressed it, I'm cutting it around, and I'm making sure that I cut them both out exactly the same. Um, so this is gonna go under the actual lace gown. It's gonna be part of, um, just a little bit of it it's gonna show, um, but it's gonna be part of what covers the boning. So now I'm gonna cut out the boning. When I measured her range of motion, she needed about six inches um, of boning to protrude out of the top of the gown to hold this in place. So I'm just kind of gesturing how much is going to be attached to the dress and how much is gonna be out of the dress. Now here's my little stash of supplies for these stands. I'm gonna take the boning and I'm going to encase it in satin ribbon and um, sew that together. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some French lace that's a slightly darker shade. It's kind of in between the uh, ribbon color and the color of the lace, because we want to gradually build to the actual color of the lace of the gown. And then finally, we're gonna put this applique on it. That's going to be what our stand is made out of. And then you saw how the lace is gonna trail. The original bridal gown lace is gonna trail down from the draping strap and attach to this. So it's gonna be several layers of lace deep. So it's gonna look um, very high quality. What you don't want is you don't want to look through the lace and see the boning. That would be awful. Oh man, out of focus. But you can still kinda see what I'm doing. <laughs> for some reason the video recorder wanted to focus on that French lace I know it's pretty isn't it <laughs> so I'm gonna sew right through this I'm of course using a size 18 needle and here I am speeding things up a little bit and I'm gonna get this started with the French lace and I am doing a free motion stitch and this is how you do it. I'm using the knee lift to raise my presser foot so that I can freely stitch. It's also called an applique stitch. You can call it, you know, either one. Um, every now and then I lock it. So when I put my knee out to the right, that's raising the presser foot. And when I let go, it pops back in place. And here's an up close look at me sewing it. Trim the threads. All right, and with this kind of lace, there's gonna be a right side and a wrong side. And you just kinda wanna look over it and see which side is the prettiest. This is again, obviously not a high quality lace, but it's definitely not the star of the show. It's just kinda serving a purpose and we want it to not be distracting. All right, so I've made these stands, and now I'm afraid that they might bow out, and I need them to bow in toward her body at all times. So to do that, I'm going to take very strong thread. It's um, four threads thick of a Tex 40 thread, and I'm going to triple knot it, and I'm going to do a gather stitch. Now, it's important when you're doing this stitch that you realize that it kind of works the opposite from how we normally stitch. Normally, we only let our stitch come up for air for a very small amount of time and we want to hide all our stitches. Well, with this, the only gathering that happens is um, gonna happen in the distance of the thread that is outside of this little um, boning tunnel that we made with the ribbon. So I hope this is making sense to you, but you can see as I pull on it, 
it is the thread that is on the outside of the surface that is going to do the gathering for you. So you want to make sure you've got some good long stitches on the top side of where you're working on the outside. See it? My nail going underneath it? That's what I'm talking about. If you hid all of those and only had little tiny stitches showing on the outside, you're not going to be able to get a good gather in that. So as usual, um, the knots are super important. So I did three knots and then hid the tail in that tunnel of ribbon. And you can see how it is going to permanently curve in now. I'm definitely securing my knots right now with Hypo Cement. Again, that's on the products page of my website. You can always order the products that I use on there. And I have tested this on her. She's tried it on and I've pinned where the stands need to be. And this is exactly how it's gonna be sewn down. So I'm just showing you, I'm not gonna bore you with sewing it down. I know you guys know how to sew that down. Just sew it down very, very securely. Um, and this is how it works. So the stand is gonna hold it up nice and high so that she can move her arms up and down and have a good time at the reception and not feel bound by her dress. So this picture shows her range of motion. She can raise her arm on the side and not be caught. And here's another angle. And then here it is straight on from the back and it just kind of uh, ruffles there at the turn. There's no um, specific pleat or special thing going on there. It just needs to be able to drape and move. And now here is that example again of where I built the stand up in the back on this dress. And I just covered it with the Alisson lace that matches. And then here's an example of where I built the stand up in the front. Um, and then we just kind of released some of the ruching and pulled that over the top to cover the stand. I hope this has helped you. Please, in the comments down below, let me know your tips and tricks of how you handle drape sleeves. If you have any questions, please leave those down below also. Also, don't forget, hit like. It makes a huge difference for me. Share this with your friends on social media. And of course, hit subscribe and hit the bell. Thanks so much.